In today's video, we are revisiting an experiment where we tried breaking a vacuum chamber underwater. We're going to do that again, but with a few twist varieties that should make it even cooler. Not too long ago, we had an experiment where we learned what would happen if you had a vacuum inside a glass bottle and then shattered that bottle underwater. I thought that experiment looked really cool and I said that I wanted to revisit it, maybe scaling it up. There are some varieties that I really wanna try and this is because I thought that looked so cool that I needed more footage of it. And so we now have a flat-walled aquarium and I've got eight different bottles and we're gonna try a few different things. We're gonna put some stuff in the bottles before we pull a vacuum, then close them off and then break them underwater and see what happens. Here's the basic idea. A small piece of rubber will work as a stopper over a glass bottle. We'll pull all of the air out of the bottle in a vacuum chamber. We'll fill some of our bottles with a variety of different materials and see how they look when they break underwater, especially in slow motion. As a sort of comparison shot, we'll start with a plain empty bottle with a vacuum inside and see how that looks. Similar to last time, we are going to start with one miniature marshmallow in our jar, and that's just to give us a visual representation of whether or not we've got a good vacuum pulled in the glass. As you probably know, if there is a good vacuum, that marshmallow will be puffed up quite a bit. The marshmallow seems to have stuck to the bottle from a little bit of residual moisture, but it shouldn't affect anything. That's interesting, you actually cracked the first time. The glass was damaged, but holding itself together. That's so weird, like you can feel everything get sucked in a little bit and it sounds just like. We tried putting one marshmallow in the bottle. Now let's see what happens if we fill it quite a bit. The marshmallows will expand in the vacuum, so hopefully they'll kind of fill the whole bottle before it shatters. <laughs> Some of the marshmallows down near the bottom got big fast enough that they sort of plugged everything up so the lower marshmallows don't have any space to expand. But you can see how big the marshmallows at the top are. Okay, we've got a jar of partially inflated marshmallows because they inflated so much that they started deflating again. Cool to see this one in slow-mo because as I saw the result, I wasn't quite sure how all of the marshmallows ended up in that one corner. Next up, we're gonna try some neon blue food coloring. We're gonna just pour all of it into the bottle and we'll see what happens to it when we pull a vacuum, but it's not gonna completely turn into gas, so we should still have really low pressure in there. Let's find out. The super low pressure is causing our food coloring to start bubbling a little bit. Oh, now it's causing it to bubble quite a bit. Bubbling and splattering all over, that looks kinda neat. All right, I think that means we're at a good vacuum. Let pressure back in, maximum effect. I'm gonna try and coat this whole bottle in our food coloring. It just looks like blue glass now. That was really impressive watching how fast and far that blue coloring spread. It was almost instant that the whole tank was blue. Looking at it at super high speed, of course I can see that it wasn't actually instant, but it felt that way when I was doing it. I really liked how the bottle with the food coloring in it went, so now I wanna try using this super neon green ink. That's delightful. sinks instead of floating, at least not nearly as much floating. Not many things that I've put in a vacuum chamber have expanded more than whipped cream, so now we're gonna try putting a little bit of that in one of the bottles, see what it does. I'm a healthy person. Whipping cream in a vacuum bottle. Ah, 
actually want to stop it before it goes too far because we have tested and you can unwhip cream by pulling too much of a vacuum. So we're just going to leave it nice and expanded. What might happen if we have something in the bottle that reacts with the water itself? We're gonna try using a little bit of baking soda and a little bit of citric acid. When they're both dry, they aren't gonna react, but as soon as water hits them, we should have quite a good fizz. One, two, three. <laughs> because we're watching it at such slow frame rate, it's fun to see the glass shatters, the water flies into the vacuum, fills it up, the bottom starts dropping off, and then kind of right when you think like, oh, it's over, that's when it starts reacting with the chemicals inside the glass and you get a second burst of fizziness. Now in this bottle, we've got five different colors of sand layered on top of one another. The sand, of course, is just a powder and isn't going to react in a vacuum chamber, but I'm really hoping we have like a cool spray, like when the water goes rushing into that depressurized bottle, it'll all just like fly in there and we'll have colors going everywhere. Three, two, one. That is some really fun footage. I love watching those in slow motion. I like we got several different results. We had some of them where the bottle got cracked all the way through. We had some where it just cracked part of the way. And we had just had these fun explosions, water just flying around, colors, sand, whipped cream. Overall, really enjoyed doing this. If there's anything you would like to see us try inside a vacuum bottle, breaking it underwater, let us know down in the comments. Guys, that's not all there is. We've got more for you to see. That box up at the top will transport you directly to our last video and you should go check it out. The box at the bottom will show you what YouTube thinks you need to be watching next. And this bomb here in the middle will subscribe you to the channel. That way you never miss out on a video. Don't forget to ring that bell and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.